Quick survey. Who out there has heard of the Anom messaging app or even been to anom.io before today? Because supposedly this was the gold standard in organized crime messaging application. There's just one small problem though. This app has literally been run by the FBI and the Australian Federal Police for the past three years. Now, supposedly, this was organized crime that was busted up, so you would think that the criminals involved would be organized. I've never even heard of a NOM, and I tried doing some research into it bef uh, you know, for this story, and what do you know, it's already starting to glow because the official website, it's been taken down, articles about some security issues with it have been taken down. You are able to view a cached version of the site like I have here. And by you, I literally just mean the notification gang because snapshots and archives of the site are disappearing from everywhere on the internet as I speak. Uh, their social media has gotten shut down. Everything is getting shut down. Um, so the article detailing it was also showed, but you can view an archive of that um, that's basically going over the security issues of a NOM. So apparently a NOM isn't just an app. It's also a custom Android ROM that is supposed to optimize the security of your device. Because, you know, of course, if your device gets compromised on an OS level, it really doesn't matter what kind of security you have on the application level. And I believe that the Anom website was selling phones that had the ROM pre-installed. So you would think that this type of setup is super secure, but Anom's security was actually worse than stock Android as this article outlines. I'll probably leave a link to uh, this archive.is in the description for you guys so that you can check it out yourself. But it updated less frequently than stock Android, so that makes it more vulnerable to zero day attacks. And there was no built-in firewall to block communications to Google, Amazon, or other surveillance services that you wouldn't want your phone pinging when you're trying to run an international crime organization. These phones were running this um, Android. They're also very difficult to get unless you yourself are a criminal. I mean, they're pretty much this website was the only place to get them, I guess. Uh, they were supposedly sent out by a higher up in the criminal organization to improve OPSEC um, because the phones, they can't really do anything else but use this specific app. Uh, everything else is pretty much blocked on it. Uh, so essentially what these criminals had was a device that's running a custom Android that had been compromised by the FBI that was poorly designed to begin with. And all plausible deniability is gone because you have to be in a gang to get this phone in the first place. It's not like these guys were downloading uh, Graphene OS on their own. So let's poke around on the archive site. Now, the way that you find this, because uh, it is archived by the Wayback Machine, but this is just like the front page of it, which really just shows you this video. Like this is supposed to be their landing page. Uh, and this is what makes me think that they were actually selling entire phones because you know they're showing off a phone here like it's not saying anything about oh it's encrypted and this custom rom or blah 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 um so yeah this is basically all that you get on way back but you can um you can go to different search engines like google pretty much seems to have the most archive links of it right now like bing has pretty much none uh, but search for something that is like a subdirectory and You'll find some, like make sure it doesn't say, you know, seized or whatever. And again, this is only people that are doing this like right after it's uploaded. Um, yeah, you can just view cached and then it'll show you like a cached version of the page. So features that Anom offers, send encrypted text and voice messages, make secure voice calls, share photos, videos, animated GIFs, uh, locations, send files, special features, so you can see that it really doesn't do a whole lot. Like literally a dark mode is listed as a special feature, right? You only list that if you don't have a whole lot of features to begin with. Uh, military grade encryption, because it's literally made by the feds. All deleted data is sanitized by overwriting the freed space with zeros. So they automatically zero things that are deleted. So yeah, that's pretty cool. Too bad that the servers that actually serve updates got compromised. Or there's not a whole lot of details specifically about how it got compromised. Like I've seen some news articles saying that 
like this was built from the ground up by the feds and then others saying that this was run by like a different um organization than the feds just compromised it like they had social media you know had social media they're not banned yet but all of their tweets and stuff have been deleted um and then they have they had a youtube so i think this youtube got taken down yeah yeah their channel got deleted um i think their subreddit was deleted as well yeah so like I said, only those of you who are watching this like right after the upload might even be able to view this stuff because they're trying to memory hole it really quickly. Uh, so since this operation has begun, Operation Ironside is, or Special Operation Ironside is what they're calling it. Uh, since that's begun, the federal police claim to have seized 3.7 tons of drugs 104 weapons and about 45 million dollars in cash and they also said that there were other assets so i'm guessing that's bitcoin monero something like that uh there's also some evidence of some hits that were supposed to be carried out that were found on these uh different anom like messaging phones uh so that this bus might have actually saved some lives instead of it just being another bust in the endless war on drugs and this is just what law enforcement have done so far, it's because this is an international crime syndicate. So the raids are still going on in different countries. Uh, arrests are still underway. I don't think there's been any in the United States or like any in uh, Mexico or South America yet, because obviously that's where some of these drugs must have been coming from. I don't think cocaine really comes from uh, any other place. But so far, most of the arrests have been in Australia. So what are my thoughts about all of this? Well, it really looks like a setup to me. That's also what a lot of different news outlets that are reporting on this are saying. Um, you know, here's a segment from the BBC. Well, let's give you a bit more detail then about this operation because it is quite extraordinary. It all began after the FBI decided to target encrypted messaging services thought to be used by organized crime. So it first dismantled two existing services and then began operating its own encrypted device company called Anom. Devices with the chat app were distributed in the criminal underworld. Australian police said the devices were initially used by alleged senior crime figures, giving other criminals the confidence to then use the platform. Police said fugitive Australian drug trafficker Hakan Aik was key to the sting, having unwittingly recommended the app to criminal associates after being given a handset by undercover officers. Officers were able to read millions of messages in real time describing murder plots, mass drug importation plans, and lots of other schemes. So there you go. The phones were distributed by a higher up in the organization, or at least it was their call uh, to start using those phones for their communications. Now, I doubt that the guy went out himself and mailed a bunch of anom phones to their employees. Uh, one of the more successful drug traffickers in these gangs was using it and recommended it to others, or maybe others just decided to start using it themselves to become more successful. They're like, hey, this guy's making millions of dollars moving coke, and he uses this kind of phone, so maybe the same will happen to me if I use that phone. But I think that this guy who made this recommendation or whatever, he was probably working as an informant. He was probably facing decades in prison and had to decide, is he going to just take that lick or is he going to roll over on his boys, send a bunch of people to jail and shut down the operation so that he can go free? I mean, put yourself in that position. You probably have a few million dollars saved up. You probably weren't planning on spending that few million dollars on commissary. That's enough drug kingpin money for you to just enough drug kingpin money for you to just retire. You probably don't care much for the street level dudes that are working for you. Hell, you probably had some of them killed and replaced already. They're just disposable to you. So yeah, you just tell those knuckleheads to start using these modified Android phones that some Fed gave you. <laughs> Like, like, seriously, some, imagine some dude you don't even know. You're like, here, try this phone out. It's super secure. And, and you go use it. You start, you know, hitting licks on that phone. Doesn't make any sense. It's honestly pretty hard to believe that a criminal organization wouldn't do the least amount of research into secure comms. Instead of doing something as simple as using an open source and end-to-end -end encrypted app like Signal that's recommended by 
security and privacy advocates all over the world. I mean, you just literally Google secure messaging app, and that's probably what you're going to get recommended. Uh, no, they don't do that. Instead, they use some literal Fed bullshit that sends their communications to the Feds in plain text. And I bet that these phones were also expensive, too, because all of the so-called military-grade security phones, they usually cost over $1,000, when these guys could have literally been more secure using free software.